I will present about the introduction of chromatography. So chromatography is a technique for separating the components or solids of a mixture on the basis of the relative amounts of each solid distributed between a moving fluid stream called the mobile phase and the contiguous stationary phase. So the mobile phase may be either a liquid or a gas while the stationary phase is either a solid or a liquid means all types of chromatography contain a stationary phase to adsorb or absorb the mixture being separated and a mobile phase which passes over the stationary phase and compacts with it for the constituent of the mixture. So what is the principle of chromatography? So number one is a sample usually a mixture of many components in a complex matrix. Also, for a sample containing ion compounds, the components must be separated from each other so that the each individual component can be identified by other analytical methods. And lastly, measurement techniques used for chemical analysis are usually specific for a single chemical species. So, there are two classifications of chromatography method, and the first one is planar chromatography. So, the planar chromatography is the stationary phase is supported on a flat plate or in the pores of paper. So it can be two, which is paper chromatography, and glass plate, which is thin layer chromatography (TLC). Uh, the different compounds in the sample needs to travel different distances according to how strongly they interact with stationary phase as compared to mobile phase. So stationary phase is supported on a flat plate or in the pores of a paper, while mobile phase moves through capillary action. Second one is column chromatography. So column chromatography is the stationary phase is held in narrow tube and the mobile phase is forced through the tube by gravity. So uh, the type of adsorption where the stationary phase is finely divided inert solids such as alumina. Uh, so the silica placed in a narrow tube or the column. So column chromatography can be classified into four classes, which is adsorption column chromatography, partition column, gel column, and the last one is ion exchange column chromatography. Next is theory of chromatography. Okay, first, all kinds of chromatography use a stationary phase, which is solid or liquid, to adsorb or absorb the mixture being separated and a mobile phase, which is liquid or gas, to pass over the stationary phase and compete for the mixture's content. There are two phases in chromatography. First, the stationary phase, and the second one is the mobile phase. The stationary phase is a phase that is fit in a place, either in a column or on a planar surface. The stationary phase is a, either a porous solid used alone or coated with stationary liquid phase. Next, for the mobile phase, a mobile phase is a phase that passes over or through the stationary phase, bringing the analyte mixture with it. It is also known as the eluting fluid. A gas, liquid or supercritical fluid can be used as the mobile phase. The next one is mechanism of chromatographic separation. There are two mechanisms of chromatographic separation. The first one is partition chromatography and the second one is absorption chromatography. Let me explain more details. Okay, for partition chromatography, based on the formation of a thin film on the surface of a solid supported by a liquid stationary phase, solid equilibrates between the mobile phase and the stationary liquid. The solid flows to and from the mobile and stationary phases, which are both liquid and is partitioned based on solubility rates. The pace of movement is determined by the solid's relative solubility of the solid in two phases. The next one is uh, adsorption chromatography. The solid molecules are retained on or attached to the surface of the solid stationary phase. The polarity difference determines solid separation. Due to varying degrees of intermolecular attraction, some components of the mixture will be more attracted to or adsorbed to the stationary phase. The stationary phase is a polar solid, often finely split silica and alumina with polar molecules as solids. The polarity difference between the solids determines the separation. Polar solids are more readily adsorbed than non-polar solids. The separation of density solids is accounted for by the equilibration between the mobile and the stationary phases. In chromatography theory, for the column, the stationary phase is maintained in a narrow tube and, gra and gravity forces the mobile phase through the tube. Okay, so column chromatography consists, consists of 
a stationary solid phase that adsorbs and separates the compounds passing through it with the help of a liquid mobile phase. On the basis of their chemical nature, compounds get adsorbed and illusion is based on a differential adsorption of a substance by the adsorbent. For plana, the stationary phase is held in place by a flat plate or the pores of paper. There is two types of plana, PC and TLC. What is PC? PC is paper chromatography. It separates dry liquid samples with a liquid solvent mobile phase and a paper strip stationary phase. For the TLC, TLC is thin layer chromatography that separates dry liquid samples with a liquid solvent mobile phase and a glass plate covered with a thin layer or alumina or silica gel for stationary phase. We have the methodology of paper chromatography to separate component in a mixture. For example, we are using a mixture of amino acids. First, a glass gel is first filled with a small amount of the solvent and covered and left aside so that the gel will be saturated with the solvent vapor. Next, a fine pencil line is drawn approximately 2 cm from the end of the chromatography tape. A drop of the mixture is then placed on the line and allowed to dry. Additional drops may be placed on the exact spot to concentrate the sample. Next, the paper is then placed vertically in the gel. The paper must not touch the sides of the gel. The spot is about 1 cm above the surface of the solvent to prevent the components from dissolving in the solvent. The solvent will be drawn up the paper by capillary action, dissolving the components in the drop as it passes through the spot. Then, the components become separated based on differences in the strength of the intermolecular forces between them and the cellulose in the paper. Next, when the solvent has almost reached the end of the paper, the paper is removed from the jar and the solvent front is marked. Next, the position of the colorless amino acids is located by spraying it in hydrogen. Almost all amino acids will produce a purple coloration. Lastly, the identity of the component can be determined by comparing the positions of the spots with the position of non-substance or calculation retention factor, RF, of the solvent for the solute. RF is the ratio of the distance moved by the solute in a given time to the distance moved by the solvent prime. Next, we will continue the example of result. In this experiment of basic chromatography, we only use four colors which is blue, green, red, and yellow color. For the first color which is blue, we can see only two color of spot which is pink and blue. For the green, we also can see two which is green spot and yellow spot. For red, there is only one spot which is red spot and for yellow, there is two spot which is yellow spot and red spot. To calculate the RF value, we need to divide distance travel by spot uh, with distance travel by solver front. Then you can have the RF value. Next, we will move on to discussion. In this experiment, we utilize concentrate colors that are often available in shops as diverse food foods. For this experiment, four food coloring are used with blue, green, red, and yellow. The solvent in which we submerge the chromatographic paper is a 0.2% aqueous solution of sodium chloride. The blue food coloring is a combination of two dyes which are pink and blue. The blue point has traveled the distance which is 12.7 cm. It is then followed by the pink spot, the distance cover being 4.9 cm. Next, we discovered two green and yellow dye mixed in the green food coloring. The yellow spot traveled 12.8 cm whereas the green spot traveled 7.4 cm. Moving on to the third food coloring, Red, we discovered there is just one location. The red spot's journey length is 8.1 cm. Last but not least, we discovered that the yellow food coloring only had two spots. The yellow spot moved 11.4 cm, as did the red spot, which likewise traveled only 3.6 cm on the chromatography paper. 
We measure the distance traversed by the solver front at 6.35 cm. Next, to calculate the RF value. To get the RF value of the spots, divide the distance traveled by spot by the distance traveled by solvent front. The RF value for food coloring blue, the RF value for pink spot is 0.38, meanwhile for blue spot is 0.99. Next, moving on into green food coloring. The RF value for green spot is 0.57, meanwhile for yellow spot is 0.99. Next, for red food coloring, the RF value for the only spot, which is red spot, is 0.98. Lastly, for yellow food coloring, the RF value for yellow spot is 0.97, meanwhile for red spot is 0.31. In conclusion, chromatography is based on the principle on the wear molecules in mixture applied onto the surface or into the solid and fluid stationary phase. Stable phase is separating from each other while moving with the aid of a mobile base. We conclude that chromatography is an effective way of determine, determining the components present in a compound such, a, such as mixture of pigments as well as in identifying the type of amino acid present.